morning guys and welcome back. So we're just finishing up milking. We're milking out the, well she's not really a tree titter, but she's stuck on one of her teeth. So we're milking her out. We treated her with penicillin just to make sure she didn't get any kind of infection. Um, we gave her some of that, so we're just kind of waiting for the residue to come out. We're going to test her today and I think she'll pass because it's been about a week and a half probably. So that should be out of her system by now. So I'll show you guys how she's healing because she's actually healed up quite a bit in the last few days. So, um, See that looks much better. It actually wasn't the very bottom of her teeth that she ripped off. It was more like the side. Um, so the milk just runs right out of it once she lets down. So we're not really worried about that getting infected anymore. It just, it's just not really going to be a problem. I don't think the milk's just going to run out. It's kind of annoying because it runs out onto the floor and makes that all dirty. But you can see where she stepped on this one. Um, a couple years back, you can see it's kind of got a weird flap on it. But it milks out perfect, so she's got no issues there. So. Not sure how much more that'll heal, but she's doing well. Typically, we would be milking out a treated cow with our bucket milker, but because she's so sensitive about you being around her udder, she will kick the bucket milker off like a thousand times. So we finally just gave up, so I can put this on her now. Okay, what Brent does is he just takes the pipe out of the tank, runs a rinse through the line to get all that out, and then we'll milk her with one of our last machines. So this machine doesn't get put on anybody else. Um, we're not milking anybody else after this, and the milk is going straight into a five gallon pail. Um, so that's what we do when we have a cow that you can't milk out with a bucket milker because she'll either kick at it or whatever the reason. That's how we milk them using a line milker. So. So how we keep the machine on her because of the other quarter that we can't milk, um, I swap the front ones, or front right is actually on her front left, and then I just pinch that one off. We do have a teat plug, but I can't find it, so I'm just flipping it over right now and that just cuts off the suction to it, but we just leave it like that. She milks out. Um, she typically doesn't kick at this. I don't know if it just pulls differently, but she doesn't really have a problem with this. It's just the bucket milker she does not like, and it's lower, so it's easier for her to get her foot around it, and then she'll just pull it off and kick the can over. and. It's just a nightmare, so we just milk her like this. Hi. So anyway, they are gonna be going outside this morning. Brent just went to get a wrapped bale. They already had a dry one. I think they have pretty much cleaned most of that up. Yeah, they pretty much cleaned all that up in here. It's a beautiful day. I'll take you guys out and show you. Look at that. Gorgeous. Spring is here. I didn't watch the weather, so I'm not really sure, but I think it's supposed to be in the mid to low 40s today, which should be so nice. I am so tired of this cold weather. Ready for spring, I am so eager. I just can't wait to get out in the field and it's gonna be so much fun to get out and do some stuff, just do anything really, so. One of the things I'm looking forward to the most this year is plowing with the International. I cannot wait to do that. So we have a couple things here that we picked up yesterday, I believe. So we have some Utter Balm. We just ran out of, uh, of the stuff that we keep in the cart. It's not the same thing, but we're not worried about the cold anymore. It's not quite the time of year they're gonna be outside enough to get sunburned. So we just picked this stuff up. Um, this is the Dr. Nailers. It's actually medicated, so that's kind of nice. Um, if a cow has a cut or something, that works really great. We really like this stuff. It smells amazing. It smells like cloves. And it's just like a really comforting smell because we've always had this all along. And I don't know, it just, it smells like a barn. It just, it makes me happy. I don't know how to explain it. So, so we got a big tub of that. It was pretty reasonable, I thought, $19.99. Um, I think the same container of this in Utterbaum, which I don't like as well personally, was uh, around $40. So I'm not really sure why anybody would buy that and not buy this. I like this better, in my opinion, that works better. And we also picked up a little container of PLC 300. This is just pipeline cleaner. That's what the PLC stands for, chlorinated alkaline non-foaming detergent. Picked up a little container of that. Our big container is almost out and he didn't have anything more than a 30 pound drum. So we picked up one of those as well. So yeah, I was afraid I was gonna hit my head on that pipe. Um, this is actually where the grain used to come from. I don't know if I've showed you guys this. Um, there's a big hopper upstairs. I think it's seven ton and you just pull this and it opens the slide, or it used to, but we haven't used it so many years that I think you'd really have to work at it now because we haven't used it in so long, but you see there's marks right there. The grain used to get stuck and you'd hit it with the end of the hoe, so that's why there's like a dent right there and over there too, but yeah, that's the old grain hopper. 
Um, I think I've showed it upstairs. I'm not really sure if I have or not, but yeah. So that's how you used to get the grain down. Once Brent comes back with that bale, we'll take that outside. We'll let the girls out. And then I've got some things I want to show you guys. All right, so all the cows are out. The barn is completely empty. We actually, the old cow wanted to go out, so we let her out. Spice we let out yesterday, and she did really, really well. She's actually much more pushy than we thought she'd be. And she loved it outside. She had a great time, so we let her out this morning as well. Um, the cow that gets picked on, we made her go out because she needs some exercise, so she'll just have to run away from anybody who's trying to pick on her. Um, we had a new baby, so I'll take you over and show you guys him. I guess I'll just show you right here. So it is another bull. He was born this morning. He's already eaten. He eats well. Not everything's about you. He's pretty medium sized. Um, very dairy looking, which is kind of strange, but he also has a really weird mark on his face. He looks like a horse. Um, I'm not sure if they call that like a blaze or something. I don't know. He, he looks more like a horse than a cow in the face, but he's cute. So I think he's got to be a really, really light, like chestnut color, um, but he's cute. Mom is over here. So she's a Jersey Brown Swiss cross, which is probably where he gets his coloring from, the Jersey and the Brown Swiss. Um, we left her inside just because we don't want her out there getting pushed around too much since she just calved. She's got a nice udder. We put some uh, balm on her just to make sure she doesn't step on one or get too dry or anything so hello she's very very friendly her name is Mary so she's doing good I'll check see if she got water coming not so happy about being left inside but we'd rather she was in here where we could keep an eye on her rather than going out there and getting too rowdy with everybody so she looks good she did clean already um, it was behind her but we ran the cleaner someone's being very noisy Oh my gosh, I should probably explain to you guys where Cinnamon is. So Cinnamon is not gone. We got rid of all the other cows, but Cinnamon is still here. Um, totally forgot. You guys are probably like, where, what happened to Cinnamon? Oh, there, there's Spice. What's the matter? I thought you liked it out there. Apparently not. So we didn't bed the barn. I think I was starting to explain this and I got way off track, which is not really surprising, but the barn is not bed because we are out of sawdust. I don't know how long it's been since we got sawdust, but I think it's been 10 or 12 days. We are going to be going to the close place, but they can only let us come at 2 o'clock. So we're going to be waiting most of the day and then going at 2. At least we can get it at the close place at all. That's just nice. So here is Cinnamon. She's hiding down here in her new pen. She loves it down here. She was racing around this morning, having a good time. So the reason she's down here is not only did we feel bad that she didn't have much space in that cage, um, but also last night she was bloated. We had some milk that I didn't realize had been left out too long and I gave her a little bit of that. It was around a bottle because I make two bottles for her so I mixed two bottles. One of them was tank milk and the other one um, was I thought was the cow who had stepped on her quarters milk but apparently it had been left there and I didn't realize that it hadn't been refrigerated so that was my fault. Um, I should have checked but we let her run around just in the barn. Um, she ran up and down the aisles and that kind of worked some of the bloat out but she was still really really uncomfortable you could tell so I ended up sticking the um, feeding tube down her throat which actually made her spit up a little bit of that nasty milk I felt so awful because it was all my fault but um, she's doing okay now she's much better this morning she ate a bottle I only gave her a bottle and I made sure it was tank milk also gave her some mineral oil last night not much because she's very small but we did give her just a little bit of that to get things moving a little bit and I noticed that she does have a poop over here a pretty runny one this morning so she did finally get some of that out of her I'm just really sorry baby that was all my fault wasn't it now she's eating hay oh but mama's got to pay closer attention next time don't I yeah she likes it when you scratch her face she's a good girl you see? <laughs> she's still hungry but I don't want to give her too much and set her back any so I'll probably give her a little bit this afternoon just to make sure she gets enough to eat um, but not too much at once so that's why cinnamon's down here my fault um, I should have known better than to feed her something that I didn't know where it came from but lesson learned I gotta go shut the wash off um, and then I'm gonna show you guys we did put a new battery in the Stoddish truck so it started right up this morning it seems so nice to get in it and turn the key and not have to jump it and all that crap so we finally got a new battery and when we took the old one out Brent said he didn't think it was that old but the battery said 2015 on it so it was a nine-year-old battery so I guess he got plenty of use out of it
also guys i accidentally left my tripod in the middle walk when the cows were going outside and instead of walking around it they just plowed over it and completely murdered it so yeah right now i need a new tripod thank you cows all right so we've got the sawdust truck parked over here um, Brent said we're going to be doing something. I don't know what. We're going to be using this for something, so I don't know if we're hauling feed or what we're doing, but there's the new battery. We did end up getting another side post, but just because we realized that it didn't really matter how hard it was to hook up jumper cables, because if you have a new battery, you shouldn't be hooking up jumper cables. So since it was already all set up for that and we really didn't have enough wire, because it's kind of, it's hooked up there, so you can't really move it that much. Um, we just decided to get another side post because it shouldn't be a problem anyway. So this is an 840 cold cranking app, so pretty big. I know that there is something else that Brent wants to look at on the Kubota, so when he comes out, he'll explain that. I'm not really sure. Something to do with a seal is gone on it. I'm not really 100% sure. Um, I don't know. It's something to do with something around the RPM. I don't know if it's like a seal or something is leaking. The mechanic told us that it was leaking when he came to check on the fuel problem we were having and he told us to look into getting one of those. We went to the dealer a couple days ago and they didn't know exactly what we were talking about. We couldn't get a hold of our mechanic to have him explain it to him. I think we are going to be looking at that. So, I don't know. When Brent comes back and tells me what we're doing, I'll let you guys know. <laughs> what you doing? Oh, it's not, not even registering. Yeah, let, let's put some in. I, I hit that really bugs me. Can you go plug the tire pump in? Oh, the... They're low? Wow, what happened to that? Been like that. Oh, that? Holy cow. I could slice straight into it. Yeah, I know. All right, I'll back over. T plug that tire pump in. I have coffee, by the way. It's almost time to get the planter out. Well, maybe not quite, but... So we're actually going up by the cemetery to pick up a load of first crop and a load of second crop. Bring those down here just so they're closer so Brent doesn't have to be running around getting bales all the time. I don't know why I'm going to the passenger side. I'm driving. I'm gonna ride with all my friends. Alrighty, ready for this guys? I don't think you're ready. Uh -huh. It's a new day. Things are looking up at Sunnydale Farm. Oh, some of you guys were also um, commenting on how it's like diagonal when the truck is going straight. The reason for that is um, Brent actually tipped the truck over one time. Well, not Brent, but somebody that was working for Brent tipped the truck over and it messed up one of the steering rods on it and it's never really been the same after that it handles fine so it's not an issue 
Google Plus that was like 10 years ago at least. So we're gonna drive right in here. There's the cemetery. Um, I'm gonna turn up this direction and then back up so that I'm not backing up the hill because there is still a little bit of snow out here and I don't want to get stuck. So, I'll just turn around right here. The door's not shut. Hold on. Uh-oh. I'm already stuck. and the ones behind them are first. to the door in case you're wondering. They don't take it so well when you tip a truck over. Alrighty. Let's try not to lose all the bales, shall we? That would really scare the guys walking, wouldn't it? Okay. He 
TO button on. Back. Make sure she's going up level. Doesn't really seem like she's going up level.
switch what? PTO. Yes, I have to turn the switch off. He always makes fun of me because I left the switch on that one time. I'll double check. Mm hmm Also wanted to show you guys. Here. Somebody sent us another set. Um, this is actually a quarter inch screwdriver bit set and a um, 3 8 drive ratchet socket set. So pretty cool. Fancy dancy. Um, but anyway, we need two three quarter inch wrenches. That's an inch. Two three quarters. Mine started. Oh, yeah, I dropped it. Okay. That was just supposed to stabilize it, right? Yeah. That bar. Yeah. Had that put on because it was shaking, so I want to go down the road. It helped. Yeah, it did. Hey, Taylor, get in, yeah. get in, hey, get in and raise the loader way the hell up. It'll be out of the way. Raise it up is all, this far as it'll go. Language. Huh? So you only noticed this because you said, asked the mechanic why there was oil on the belts. Yeah. And he said that this is what was wrong. I don't see anything like what he's talking about. I almost ran into it again. What is this thing? Unless it's that right there. That could be. I think it is. This right here. This line right here. Look, look. Can you see it moving up there? He said there were two nuts right here. Yeah. So the, like I said, the seal in between those two nuts and where it hooks is what's leaking. He said... Prob the seal see, behind there is what's leaking. Yeah. Okay. That, so... What, so it's directly under the alternator. Yeah. Directly under the alternator. That's what he's talking about right there. At least now you know yeah. what it is exactly. Wish we had known a couple days ago when we were there. Oh. But. It's directly under the alternator. Boy, they had a, what was it called? An M6141? Really? Nice oh. tractor. Nice. We're about $95,000 short. Yeah, just a little bit bigger than this one. Well, well, quite a bit bigger than this one, but. This one's been pretty good. I wouldn't have a problem with another Kubota. Nope. But they're expensive. They get too big for their britches now. Yeah. Like good. John Deere. Paying for the orange and the green paint. Well. Keep coming. Okay, that's good. I was afraid he was gonna give it too much and drive right off.
of the pine, so it smells really good. So the barn is all bed and we laid down a second crop bale for them. Just makes it a little bit easier when they come in. Um, they take a stall much better when there's hay down in front of them, obviously, because um, when there's no hay, they'll just jump in and hop out and jump in and hop out, find a different stall. I call it stall hopping. And it's really frustrating when trying to hook them, so we just go around with a bale first and they take a stall much better. So we gotta let them in and get to milking. I just love how the barn looks in spring. The sun comes in through that window around this time of night. It's just so cozy in here, it's warm and it just feels really good. So yeah, we're gonna have a coffee break before we let them in. And since I knew you guys would be disappointed if we didn't, we stopped and got donuts. Um, I think they're jelly. Yep, they're jelly. So can't wait to eat one of those. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. The light was really weird over there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And keep it real, keep farming, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.